Over its lifespan, the PlayStation 2 came in two major variations, the fat and the slim model. There were a couple other more obscure versions, like the PSX, however, these are the two primary ones that most people are familiar with. But what if Sony released another iteration of the console? What would that look like? Well, a modder by the name of Wesk thinks it may have looked a little something like this. This is the Ultra Slim PS2 mod, a digital-only version of the console that Sony never made. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. I know it's been a while, but I'm happy to be back and I'm ready to kick things off in the new year. And what better way to do that than with a really awesome mod for the PlayStation 2. This is the Ultra Slim PlayStation 2 mod. And as you can see, it is nearly half the size of a regular Slim model. It uses original hardware, but as you can see, it lacks an optical drive. So to account for that, it incorporates an internal MX4 SIO mod so that we can load our PlayStation 2 library directly from an SD card. Now this mod comes from a super talented individual by the name of Wesk. He is a network engineer from Australia with a passion for modding and tinkering with retro consoles. You may know him from the really amazing Ashita project, which is a portable Nintendo Wii. I'm also planning to take a look at the Ashita later this year, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that, as well as other great mods that I'll be showcasing on the channel. Now Wesk not only does great mod work, but he also generates 3D scans of shells for many different consoles, controllers, and video game peripherals, which he has made publicly available to everyone. These scans are unlicensed with zero restrictions. This is a great resource for the retro community. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. Anyway, back to the Ultra Slim PS2, this mod has a bunch of great features, and is actually not too difficult to do. So let's jump right in. Alright, in this video, I'm going to show you all the parts you need if you want to build your very own Ultra Slim PS2. Then I'll demonstrate how to put it all together. I'll go over all of its features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first and most important item you need is the shell itself, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay not only does PCB fabrication, but also offers a multitude of other services such as 3D printing, which as you can see, generates some pretty stunning results. They offer an assortment of materials to print in such as nylon, PLA, and even metals such as aluminum. However, per Wesk's recommendation, he suggested using PCBWay's UTR8100 transparent resin, along with a transparent varnish finish, which gives this truly astounding high gloss, crystal clear, almost glass-like finish. All you need to do is simply download the 3D files from Wesk's Ultra Slim PS2 thread on Bitbuilt, which I'll have linked in the video description, and then upload them to PCBWay's website using the settings I just mentioned. I have to say, the results truly do speak for themselves. And again, huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. Okay, so moving on to the next item, if you want to have the rotating PS2 logo, you'll have to salvage one from a fat PS2 disc tray. You can pick one of these up from eBay or from a broken PS2 you may have lying around. Next, we need a micro SD to SD card adapter. This will be used to incorporate the MX4 SIO functionality into the console. You'll also need this specific sliding switch, which will be used to toggle the SD card port on and off, which I'll explain in more detail later on in the video. Now, in addition to the shell, I also have the power button resin printed from PCBWay. You'll also need this SD card retaining bracket, which I actually printed myself. All the 3D printed parts, again, are available on Wesk Thread for the Ultra Slim PS2 project, which I'll have linked down in the video description. And the last item we need is our donor console. This mod requires a 79,000 slim model PS2. This is the only model that will work with this mod since it already has a very small motherboard. All right, so that's everything we need for this mod. Now, let me show you how to put it all together. All right, so first thing we need to do is tear down the PS2 to get to the console's motherboard. 
It's a pretty straightforward process, it just requires you to unfasten a few screws and remove some ribbon cables. Great, so with the motherboard out, we're gonna need to perform a bit of surgery. We'll need to cut this portion of the motherboard that has the second USB port. To do that, I first removed this tiny capacitor since it's right where I need to make the cut. With it removed, I grabbed a ruler and used my craft knife to score the PCB surface. I initially thought I could cut my way through the PCB with the craft knife, but quickly realized that it would just take forever. So I upped the ante and grabbed my trusty hacksaw. This made the job go by so much faster and it made a very nice and clean cut. All right, with the USB off, let's proceed to the next step. While the cut does look very clean, we need to ensure that there isn't any shorts in between the four layers of the PCB. To do that, grab a piece of 1000 grit sandpaper and begin to smooth out the area we just cut. We want to do this at a roughly 45 degree angle as shown, which will help ensure that there is not any shorts in between the PCB layers. And here's the final results. You can clearly see the four distinct layers of the PCB, which is pretty neat. Next, we need to restore power to the 5 volt regulator since we cut the traces that supplied power to it. To do that, tin this leg and then solder a wire to it. Then solder the other end of that wire to this 7 volt pad here. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Next, let's locate the lid detection switch. We're going to convert it into the power reset button for the console. Here you can see the two traces that we'll need to cut first. Simply use a craft knife to sever their connection. And this is what it should look like once they've been cut through. Now we need to wire up the switch in a way so that it will be able to power on the console. First, solder a wire to this leg shown here and then another wire to this leg. This one is short since it's gonna be connected to the ground plane right next to it. And the other wire will connect to this pad shown here, which is for the reset functionality. And this is how the switch should look when wired up correctly. Now would be a good time to test the console to see if it will power up. If you're having any issues, it is most likely caused by a short in the section of the PCB we cut off requiring some more sanding. But thankfully everything checks out fine and it boots right up. Now grab the bottom shell and place the SD card adapter into its designated location. You'll notice immediately that it is too long, so we need to cut it to length. I set it flush to the shell wall and mark off the part that we need to trim. And with some scissors, I cut it to length. Then coming in with a file, I made the surface flat and smooth. And as you can see, the fitment is perfect. Now to set up the internal MX4 SIO, we need to wire the SD card adapter to the slot 2 memory card pins. First, let's tin these contacts on the SD card adapter. Then solder a wire to each contact. Using a different color will help you keep track of where each wire goes. WESC has a great diagram that clearly shows you how to wire everything up. I strongly recommend that you reference it and I'll have it linked in the video description. And this is how it should look when you're done. Now, you will need to bridge the white wire, which is the acknowledge wire, to the black wire, which is ground. You'll notice that I have a resistor in between, but it is actually not necessary. All you need to do is bridge them together with a wire as shown. No resistor is necessary. 
Great, now let's go ahead and solder the other ends of the wires from the SD card adapter to the slot 2 memory card pins as shown. Please note that this white wire is not coming from the SD card adapter. This is a brand new wire which we will be soldering to the switch. So again, do not solder the white wire from the SD card adapter to this pin. It is a new one. I'll explain this a little bit later on in the video. Okay, now grab the bottom shell and then place the SD card adapter into its designated slot. Then drop in the 3D printed SD card retaining bracket on top. Then feed the white wire from the SD card adapter and the other white wire from the memory card pin through the opening for our switch. We can then go ahead and drop in the motherboard. And while the console is open, let's also go ahead and replace the CR2032 clock battery. All right, looking good. Now let's drop in the RF shield. Go ahead and fasten the two screws to secure the motherboard. All the screws are reused from our donor PS2 console. Next, drop in the fan and then fasten it to the RF shield. And don't forget to plug it back into the motherboard. Next, grab our slider switch and then straighten out the pins. Then tin the middle pin and then one of the other pins. It doesn't matter which one. Make sure though that you do tin the middle pin. This is very important. Then solder the two white wires to each of the pins as shown. Now go ahead and push the switch into the slot in the shell. The switch is pressure fitted so it will take a bit of force to get it in there. Okay, we're almost done. Go ahead and grab our donor disc tray cover and begin to unfasten the PlayStation logo. With the logo and its components removed, go ahead and transfer them to our new top shell and then fasten it in place reusing all the components. Since our new shell is a bit thicker, don't fasten the screw all the way in, leave it a bit loose. This will allow us to rotate the logo a lot easier. Now, let's give it a quick test. Nice. And the last thing we need to do is drop the top shell on and then button the whole thing up using four of the exterior screws from our donor PS2. And there you have it, the ultra slim PlayStation 2. All right, with the ultra slim PS2 all put together, I have to say that I am really digging the design, especially its smaller footprint. Overall, the project wasn't too difficult, but it does have some scary parts like trimming the PCB. That was the first time I trimmed a board like that and thankfully it didn't go sideways. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the features this mod has to offer. First, let's discuss its size. It's roughly half the length of a standard slim model since we essentially removed the optical drive. I think it's a very attractive design and Wesk even topped it all off with a really awesome stand that you can also print yourself. The stand incorporates air inlets on the bottom as to not impede circulation within the console. It's a very well thought out design. Now not only is the footprint smaller, but the shell incorporates some really nice design cues. One of which is the PlayStation logo that swivels, allowing it to always be upright regardless of the console's orientation. This was something that I actually requested Wes to incorporate in his design, and he did an amazing job. Other subtle designs are the inclusion of the Sony and USB logo, as well as the square, circle, triangle, and X symbols into the shell. I also particularly like how the circle incorporates the power reset button. Speaking of which, I think it's really awesome how Wes repurposed the lid detection switch to become the power reset button. It's really quite ingenious. Wesk also improved cooling within the console by making additional air intake vents, as well as a guided exhaust which actually didn't exist on the stock console. Now one of the coolest features, which is of course completely optional, is the internal MX4 SIO integration. 
For those that want to simplify the installation, you actually don't need to perform this portion of the mod and can simply use a standard MX4 SIO or MC2 SIO memory card in its place. But having it internal just streamlines the entire build in my opinion, and really just makes it look like a nice and tidy package. Now the switch is another cool feature that allows you to retain the second memory card port. When switched on, it allows you to load games directly from the SD card, but as a consequence, it completely deactivates the second memory card slot. However, when switched off, it allows you to use the second memory card slot, but of course, you now can't load games from the SD card. Had we not included the switch, you would not be able to use the second memory card slot at all. So the switch itself is also optional if you don't mind not having the ability to use the second memory card slot. Alright, so those are the primary features of the Ultra Slim PS2. But now, let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I think first and foremost, from an aesthetic perspective, it simply looks stunning. While there isn't really any perceived benefit when compared to a regular Slim model, I think it's a very fun project that gives you a smaller, very attractive, digital-only PS2. It's just such a well-designed and executed mod. Wesk really did a fantastic job with it. Additionally, for those that want to print the shell themselves, Wesk designed it in such a way that it doesn't require any supports, which is great since the print won't require any post-processing. And lastly, I just love how the shell incorporates an internal MX4 SIO into its design. With this method of loading PS2 games improving with every iteration, it is increasingly becoming my go-to way of playing PS2 games. I've tried a dozen games on this new version of OPL, and they all ran flawlessly. Okay, so those are the pros. But now, let's get into the cons. For me, the biggest con is game compatibility and stability. While the MX4 SIO is being improved with each passing day due to the amazing work the devs over at PSX Place are doing, there are still some compatibility issues with games. One piece of advice to ensure good compatibility is to use Samsung SD cards. Previously, I was using this Kingston card and had loads of problems like having games freeze or not load altogether. As soon as I switched over to Samsung cards, however, I had a much better experience. So there you have it, the Ultra Slim PS2, a modder's vision of what another entry into the PS2 family could have looked like. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I really think you're gonna like this video here. So check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next Thursday.